These are ferrets. Or to take a leaf from the army's book, cars scout 4x4 brackets, ferret brackets off. This is a new batch being shaken up on Salisbury Plain. The job of the scout car is liaison and reconnaissance, usually bang up the front line, sniffing out danger. Armoured against trouble, they weigh over four tons, but can make 50 miles an hour along the road, or wade unprepared through three foot of water. They are part of Britain's defence. About 2,000 ferrets are with the army from Britain to the Far East. An export too, over 1,500 sold so far to armies of other nations. This two or three seater with a gun on top is just about the world's most successful scout car ever. And that's partly because it's tested, tested, and then tested again. Sometimes in quite interesting ways, as a debt mold in North Germany, which was the start from these headquarters of a British armored brigade of an unusual, adventurous test of these machines and the men who run them. Two teams of officers and drivers from two different regiments are about to take off on a 5,000-mile exercise round Europe. The brigadier's purpose is that both teams should ruthlessly test out a new type of oil seal fitted to the wheels of two different versions of ferret. The Remy Major joins the talks. He's the technical expert. Between the two regiments, there's a sporting rivalry. One is infantry, the other cavalry. For the cavalry, Lieutenant John Disley is briefed on the six checkpoints where both teams must report. No racing, but the cavalry would rather like Disley back first. And the infantry don't want their team, led by Lieutenant Charles Jackson here, to be second. 28 days are allotted for 5,000 miles and six compulsory rest days, one at each checkpoint. From Detmold to Shape HQ in Paris, French cavalry barracks, Saumur, French army airbase, Le Luc, Italian amphibian regiment, Venice, German mountain battalion, Berchtesgaden, Berlin, and then home. 28 days, if things work out along Autobahn, Route Nationale, and Autostrada as patly as planned if the new type oil seals hold. The Remy Major bangs home the special points for checking. The teams of officer and corporal will be on their own, coping with fuel at nine miles to the gallon, food, money, reports. Routes too between the checkpoints, radio to keep in touch. The engines of both are the same. Four and one quarter litre. And they're ready. Disley's cavalry ferret has a turret. Jackson's hasn't. No ceremony to delay the start. The brigade major wishes them both good luck. Report to the brigadier personally next month. And they're off. A month till they see old Detmold again. Disley, with Corporal Mason driving, swings south across Germany to join the sweeping Autobahn to the Rhine. And Jackson, with Corporal Gray, so far choosing the same route, warmly pursues. Friends in tanks wave Disley by. Jackson is first across the Rhine by the Europe Bridge, over the frontier into France. So to Strasbourg, city of the Council of Europe. Disley had reckoned that a shortcut by Rhine ferry should be quicker. It wasn't. Corporal Mason chants at the bit. Been looking forward to a nice bit of France, sir. They say that Paris... Yes, Paris tomorrow, but work first. We check in at Shape Headquarters. Which route do you guess the others took, sir? I'll try to find out when I call them up tonight. 
Jackson is some way into France when rain damps the jubilant infantry. Off again, still westward towards the first night's rest. Disley's already settled, but whether in front of Jackson or behind him, he doesn't know. But he's got a radio with a range of 20 miles. Hello, four. A four, a nine, a echo. Signals over. Nine echo, OK. About time, two. I've been waiting ages. Over. Four. I suppose you're well into France, then. You sound pretty faint. Over. Nine echo. Faint or not, our location's secret. She'll be glad to know the natives aren't exactly hostile. Paris glimmers ahead. Paris, with its, uh, distractions. But a Ferris job is frontline reconnaissance, and the cavalry crew are only getting to know their allies. So on the second day, it's the infantry pair who are the first to arrive at checkpoint number one, Shape HQ at Versailles. On the green fringe of Paris was established the first headquarters of the great military union, which is the teeth of NATO. The colonel, to whom Jackson reports, could have been an officer from any of NATO's member nations. Set up in 1949, NATO's aim is by constant vigilance to keep the peace. This is the world's most international officers' mess, for NATO spans from Norway down to Turkey and from Germany westwards over the Atlantic to the USA embracing former foes and former allies in a new design. <coughs> the cavalry crew thought they had just enough time for a further look round Paris, and they're darn nearly late. Jackson, one up and five checkpoints to go, can do his sightseeing more leisurely now in the 24 hours rest that both crews get at each stage. The cavalry team reached the Loire below the castle at Saumur. This time, no dawdling. They're a day behind and press on to checkpoint number two, the French cavalry barracks just outside the town. Jackson's been and gone. The French colonel, who is to sign Disley's logbook, watches the famous cadre noir at exercise. The French believe that some riding aids every officer's education, but there are only a handful left of these advanced experts in a school given over to modern armored training. green valley of the Loire is left miles behind as the infantry leads the ferrets humming through the heart of France into the shimmering southern heat. On these main routes, the ferret is cruising near its 45 mile per hour average maximum. Each night, the teams pitch roadside camp, then a jolt. In one of the oil seals, heat smoulders. With care, they may be able to limp into checkpoint three, the French Army Air Base at Le Luc. The Côte d'Azur is only minutes away in one of their helicopters. The base is busy. Its helicopters are flying a joint exercise over the Mediterranean with the French fleet. But Jackson's made very welcome. He explains what's happened, asks for help, and gets it. The 
team, thoroughly briefed before they started, explain the details of the oil seal to the French mechanics. Meantime, on the nearby Côte d'Azur, Disley, I'm all right, Jackson, joins in another sort of, uh, exercise, and Corporal Mason thought he'd test the ferret out on sand. Be fair. It is the cavalry team's day of rest. Jackson's been biting his nails in the French mess at Le Luc till his ferret's ready. So they offer him a lift in a helicopter aloft over the glamorous, expensive coast. As he hovers, isn't that dizzy? No one says how you're going to spend your time off, standing up or going down. Venice, their next checkpoint lies ahead. A mirage almost on the far side of Italy's hot, thick neck. Time drifts away, sand in an hourglass, and Disney's overstayed his span. He learns that Jackson, completely repaired, has recovered the lead. It's turn and turn about, one up, one down, as the crews sweat along the sinuous Italian Riviera. And Disney gets the worst of it, while the corporal gets the view. After 400 sizzling autostrada kilometers from Genoa, the infantry dash into Venice and snatch the ferry to the Lido. Still in front, 10 days out, nearly halfway round. The Disley Mason cavalry crew have been lapping up the hot miles just behind and getting closer. Curse it, they've missed the boat again. And that's the liquid checkpoint four the HQ of a famous Italian amphibious force based beyond the Grey Lagoon on the tip of the leader. Quick thought, fractured Italian and powerful persuasion might save the day. The Italian Lagoon Division wouldn't by any chance have a landing craft which might be crossing over, which might take a ferret across to be sporting. The infantry smuggers first-class tourists on the ferry savour the slow passing of the famous sights. St. Mark's, the Doge's Palace, the Bridge of Sides. And Disley's done it. Whipped the lead from under their dreaming noses for the first time since Le Luc. This is the Lido. He's away to the barracks of San Nicolo, four centuries old, built where crusades started for the Holy Land 800 years ago. The Italian colonel, to whom he must report, is just about to inspect his headquarters troops. missed that little ceremony. Infantry and cavalry are all square at halfway. <coughs> the toughest part of the trial is still ahead, but not at once. Both crews are to watch the Lagoon Division working and write their reports. And now on their rest day, the infantry relax. Lieutenant Jackson has a little uh, homework. Corporal Gray supports him in the team. After the heat of Venice, the seasons change and summer's sucked away as the ferrets spiral northward through the Italian mountains. Now they'll be tested in ice and snow and all low gear work. Ferrets have five gears in a pre-selective gearbox.
there's nothing worse than a broken fan belt. The cavalry crew are pretty quick at fixing it, but Disley curses another holdup. Even with a petrol tank holding 21 gallons, this climbing means many fueling stops. This seems a Jackson breakthrough. Back in Germany again, he's twisting on and up through the Bavarian Alps to the next checkpoint, Berchtesgaden, the headquarters of a German mountain battalion, another weapon in NATO's varied armory. Even the dogs in step. But here's a snag. The German colonel to whom they must report is miles away. He's somewhere up there, 6,000 feet up with his troops on an exercise. No choice but bash on up. Out with maps and compasses and plot a route and damn well get there. Trouble, big trouble. In this wild country of avalanches, any mountain route can suddenly be choked with snow. The mountain troops have to be swung in by air to fight their battles. Down below, Jackson hears the roads blocked, so he must find himself the quickest detour. Disley, half a day behind, seizes on a different solution. He's forgotten the German for helicopter, but his sign language is good. Here, Edelweiss, here is an English officer. Der kann nicht mehr weiter. Ich schicke einen Mann mit runter. A helicopter is available. Leaving Corporal Mason in charge of the ferret, Disley whirls off with a traditional dash and flurry of the cavalry. The infantry gets there too, and there's not much in it, but the thought remains, a bit of a fast one. Five checkpoints made now, and three quarters of the way round, though the going is slower, but they still must take their compulsory day of rest. Up here in the snow? Disley's notion is to muscle in on the mountain troops' suddenly alarming exercise. They've made bold Disley play the part of a casualty, and he's beginning to feel like one. Not for us, decides Jackson. Rest day? You're joking. Rest is what I'll need after. The infantry crew, after a day below the snow line, drive on for Berlin. Unfair it may seem, but Disley, with a helicopter lift back to his ferret, has snaffled the lead again and is speeding towards Helmstedt, the western start of the lonely corridor through the Russian zone of Germany to West Berlin. Berlin now, sir. How are we doing? About three hours up on the other. Yes, the last checkpoint's Berlin. The 
infantry, making more speed along the Bear Autobahn, have passed the cavalry and approach Berlin. Once Disley has cleared the Allied controls on the demarcation line, he too is slipping through one of the few windows in the Iron Curtain towards the city which stands as an island of freedom. In Berlin's Remy workshop, Jackson's ferret has been repainted after more than 4,000 miles of dust, heat and snow. And he and his driver are out on the town. At Detmold, the brigadier, before going out to the brigade exercise, watches the progress of both ferrets right up to the Berlin Wall. For both crews, this rest day is a sadder one taken in the bisected city watching other British troops at work this side of the inhuman war which cut the city through in 1961 and still amputates families from their relations and friends. Wernerstrasse, the border of two worlds and called the Street of Crosses. They mark the spots where desperate men and women jumped to freedom and died in little crumpled heaps so close to it. Along the Russian zone border, down a street split up its middle, the guards stare face to suspicious face through the barbed wire. The infantry team drive past the Brandenburg Gate, now behind the wall. and past the Russian war memorial inside West Berlin. And then back into the smart shopping world of the Kofürsten Dam. Disley, on the outskirts, has already left the city and hurries for Gatow Airport. And with a stab of conscience, and just in case you think I'm cheating, I've got permission for a lift back by air. Over. Nine Echo, that was clever of you. Out. Get to airport, fast as you can, Corporal Gray. I'm afraid the others have really done us now. After all, his colonel had said, though it isn't a race, we'd like you back first. An airlift will save him the long drive back through the Russian zone of Germany, and the RAF not for the first time, stretches down its long, swift arm to help. Neither is Jackson disappointed. There's another flight out in an hour, and space can be made for the infantry ferret. They're often moved about like this in action. Gutersloh near Hanover, back in Western Germany again, and the cavalry ferret pops happily out. The trial's nearly over, bar the shouting, thinks Disley. After all, they're on time, the oil seals have taken one hell of a hammering, and he must have shown the dash and initiative they're always on about. And so, on the last lap, back to Detmold. But he's forgotten the brigadier isn't here. He's miles away on an exercise. It. How do you get through a full-scale battle? <laughs> to be almost home and dry in the winner's enclosure, where is the brigadier? Here, and a ferret coming. There. Which? Cavalry? Infantry? It's Jackson, straight from the airport. The infantry do it, just. Here's Disley, almost a dead heat. Honor all round seems satisfied. Log books are handed in. Tomorrow the last reports to finish, the oil seals to be stripped out and scrutinized. They've stood up well to the test, both machines and men.
Yes, a good sort of run for a couple of ferrets. And it wasn't meant to be a race, was it? <laughs>